You know, Mother's Day is coming up, and what's the best thing to do around your mom than put in some earbuds so you don't have to listen to them nag away? Moms are also often one of the few people in our lives who still leave voicemails on our phones or call us just to say hi. Gah, gotta love them. So this Mother's Day, make that next mom call extra special. Spoil your mom with the gift of quality premium wireless audio courtesy of Raycon, okay? I actually use these earbuds. They're super comfortable, and um, let me tell you something. For the mom on the go, Raycons offer 8 hours of playtime and a 32 hour battery life with their compact portable charging case, okay? And just for y'all, check it out. We got a special treat. Go to buyraycon.com slash dudes to get 15% off your Mother's Day order. That's buyraycon.com slash dudes. Our lovely dudes behind the foods listeners, listen, you're going to die. That is a fact. Mm -hmm. I look at your face and your habits and you could croak at any second. Well, guess what? Don't you care about the people around you? Well, you need policy genius because we're talking about easy, easy life insurance. And you know what? They take the hard guessing and the work out of it because we love policy genius. Let me show you how it works and how it gets down. Policy genius is your one-stop shop to find the insurance you need at the right price. Click the link in the description to head to policygenius.com slash dudes to get started. And in minutes, you can compare personalized quotes from top companies to find your lowest price. You could save 50% or more on life insurance by comparing quotes with Policy Genius. The licensed agents at Policy Genius are on hand through the entire process to help you understand your options and make decisions with confidence. The Policy Genius team works for you, not the insurance companies. Mm. My life was taken. I don't need you to take my time away from me. No bullshit. Head to policygenius.com slash dudes to get your free life insurance quotes and see how much you can save. Dudes, behind the foods. Yo, it's the dudes, behind the foods. Dudes, behind the foods. Yeah, it's the dudes, behind the foods. That's actually really fucking good. Ah, good morning, David So. Good morning, Tim. And good morning, everyone out there listening and watching in podcast land. This is Dudes Behind the Foods. I'm Tim Chantharoxi. And I'm David So. So we're here early today. Yes, kind we of. are. We're never here early. We usually try to schedule this shit like, you know, afternoon time so we can be hungry for lunch. But today we got some things to do, so we, we're a little earlier. And David So, you said you're going to bring some breakfast sandwiches for us. And it didn't happen because the Starbucks I went to didn't have it today. god damn how i don't know you, i've never had a starbucks not have that delicious uh mcdonald's mcmuffin <laughs> <laughs> yo starbucks sandwiches are actually on point so they, i was gonna ask you do you prefer the sausage egg uh mcmuffin or do you prefer the starbucks sausage egg sandwich oh between like mcdonald's and starbucks yeah, which one's better that's a that's a tough one but i i'm gonna go McDonald's, but oh. I don't know if I've had the Starbucks one too many times because I always, I used always used to get like McDonald. Um, Starbucks has this feta wrap. I call it the Fetty wrap. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's a feta and spinach wrap, and it was delicious. And they also have their own sriracha in Starbucks, which is fucking bomb as well. And I used to get that, put it on my wrap. Their bre- oh, they used to have dog. They used to have this motherfucking. Oh, I sat on my balls on accident. <laughs> they used to have this breakfast sandwich. It was chorizo and like gouda or some shit or some type of ma. It was some type of cheese. It was delicious, bro. It was a chorizo patty. It was bomb. I don't know if they still have it. I it, haven't had that. It was mad unhealthy. Like it was a lot of calories on that shit, well, but it was shot. good. You don't don't ever look at the calories, all right? <laughs> but just to let you know. I actually prefer the Starbucks one over the McDonald's one. Wow. Because, like, it's different, man. Like, the patty, the sausage, it's seasoned better. And then also the, the eggs, the huevos. Yeah. It has butter in it. Ah, they Simone. Use that delicious butter. And then on top of that, with that custom sriracha thing, yeah. with that sandwich, it's just kind of game over at that point. Orale. It's hard, dude. It's hard. I, I was shocked. I actually found out I liked it more when we went to... Um, What's that lobster ass steak that we went to when Sem Foods? So, Maine? Yeah, 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 yeah. And then we stopped off at the Starbucks. Yeah. We were with um, Stacia. Stacia. Producer from Thrillist. Yes. And then I, she got me a sausage egg muffin, and you told you told me about that sriracha. <laughs> yeah. Put that shit together, it was game over. I'm Bruh. like, that's, that's the one. 
Wow, I actually haven't got some Starbucks breakfast in a minute. Well, since I thought we were going to be having... Oh, you know who also has a bomb-ass breakfast? Wendy's, dog. Have you had Wendy's breakfast? Never. Delicious. Really? Yes, bro. So they just started doing breakfast sandwiches, I want to say like two years ago. (gasps) Bruh. I didn't even know they had breakfast sandwiches. Bomb, dog. Like, bomb. They use like a white cheese. It's not a yellow cheese. It's a white cheese. It's... It's it's great, bro. And you know how Wendy's is always kind of like, you know, Wendy's, is, I don't think Wendy's freezes their patties ever either. It's fresh every day. Mm, I've, I've been finding out this like weird secret. <laughs> so there's a McDonald's next to my house, right? Yeah. So every every fast food place, you can ask like when they fresh cook their lunch food. Oh. Right. So they'll time it out uh, basically depending on like, um, you know, when their breakfast ends and they'll each place kind of times out differently. But. I go like literally maybe I say an hour before breakfast is about to end, Mm -hmm. right? And then if you order like fries or some shit, it's like fresh fried. That's so smart. It's so fucking good. Oh. And that's a fat person tip for you guys. Wow. Fat tips with David So. (laughs) When you wake up in the morning, make sure you use a stick to get the parts you can't reach. (laughs) Put deodorant in all your crevices. (laughs) Listen, if I... That that was like one of my biggest fears is being a stinky fat person. <laughs> I could never ever be the fat stinky person. That's like that's like one of those things. Listen, if you're a fat person, right, and you're the stinky fat one, everybody's gonna know that you're stinky fat guy. Whatever. Rick also, you know, my boy Rick, who's also a, a portly gentleman. Um, oh, portly. <laughs> <laughs> he has always smelled great, and he shares the same sentiment as you, where he does, doesn't want to be the stinky big dude, right? And so Rick has this combo of, like, perfume and cologne and deodorant that he does. It's like, every time he walks by, it's like, mm, you smell good. <laughs> and if you listen, like, every time a girl hugs Rick, they're like, mm, you smell good? And one time, bro, we were in, I probably told you the story, but we went to a John Legend concert. It was John Legend and Robin Thicke it was a great concert and we sat down <laughs> and our seats were right next to this um this couple um they're probably around our age and um as soon as Rick sat down the dude was already a little you know a little tipsy a little sauced he sat down <laughs> and this dude looks at Rick he goes damn hey, man you smell good <laughs> And Brooke's like, thanks, man. He's like, smelling like soap and shit. <laughs> we died. <laughs> Trying to get out of here or what? Oh, my God. Well, I, I thought we were going to be eating, so I brought us some a little breakfast. You know, you don't want to get too sauced for breakfast, right? But mm-hmm. what goes great for breakfast when you're trying to slightly turn up? Then mimosas. Oh. A Got little champagne? A little great cheap champagne, a little Corbel, a little champagne, and... Just some orange juice from right out my fridge. Some Simply Orange with mango. Oh, Veda's going to wonder where her <laughs> orange juice is. <laughs> Daddy, I'm thirsty. You shut up. She's going to be like, again, your alcohol consumption is ruining this family. At 9 a.m. in the morning, <laughs> you're already drinking champagne. Champagne don't count. <laughs> brunch, brunch, brunch. Just like a fucking alcoholic. <laughs> Champagne don't count. Brunch alcohol don't count, dog. If we would have had a Bloody Mary right now or or a, a, um, or a this, does not count. I gotta tell you something. When was the first time you ever had champagne? First time I had champagne, I want to say it was probably just at like one of these random. You know, you go to New Year's parties with your parents when you're a little kid. You don't have any New Year's plans. You're not hanging out with your friends. So you go to a party with a bunch of fucking old people, mm-hmm. and it was probably just like a little plastic cup filled with champagne. And I took a sip, and I was like, "Ooh, I'm all like, oh, oh, oh. Did you when you had uh, New Year's? Did you did you always kick it with your family or your friends? Family at first, you know, when I was a little kid, and then. <laughs> Quick side story. I remember the first time I stayed up till midnight, I felt like a fucking man. Because as a little kid, <laughs> that's like 9 p.m. I'm like, oh, man, I'm not going to make it. Oh, man. And the first time I stayed up till midnight, I was like, guess what, guys? I stayed up till midnight last night. <laughs> <laughs> and your dad's like, my son's such a pussy. <laughs> oh, my God. And then, I, and then I, yeah, I woke up and my dad had drawn penises on my face. <laughs> no, but um, like a loser. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to think of when I started kicking it with friends for New Year's. Oh, my boy PD Flo in high school, he would have a New Year's party uh, every year. So we would all go to his house. And um, so probably like around my junior junior year of high school, so I, like we started going to his house and, you know, mm. drinking a little bit or uh, bringing in the New Year together. I always had, there's like this one 
random memories I always have. So it's every year. So with me and my group of friends, and even till this day, depending. Um, oh, you did it very safe. People have been getting hit in the eye with that shit. I wasn't trying to do that to you. Mm-hmm. And then there's, um, we would either kick it on 4th of July, always. Mm-hmm. And then I we would have uh, Christmas shit and Thanksgiving shit together with the same group of people. Mm-hmm. And we still continue our Christmas and Thanksgiving meal till this day, since high school. Okay. But I, there's one funny fucking memory about... <laughs> You ever have like uh, one guy that's like super cringe? They they don't know how fucking cringy they are. Mm-hmm. So like, <laughs> so there was a friend of ours in high school that moved to Texas. Okay, it was this girl, and when she came back, this dude decided that he wanted to hit on her, mm-hmm. but he didn't know how fucking just awkward and weird he is. <laughs> Let me tell you what this motherfucker did. So this is a this is a Fourth of July party. We're all kicking it. Everybody's having fun. Yeah. It's all a good time. And then out of nowhere, this fool brings a chair in the middle of the living room <laughs> to the middle of the living room. Okay. He grabs her by the arm and sits her down in the middle with the chair. Oh my god. And then he starts singing to her. <laughs> he, is he a good singer? No. I we actually have somebody fucking recorded it. Oh. So we, <laughs> I got to get the footage from somebody. I'll blur out his face. Oh. But it's one of the most awkward. Like, it's like a sitcom moment. So he, imagine the girl is here. So he, he goes behind her, wraps his arm around oh her. Oh, my God. And they've never been flirty? <laughs> no, ever. <laughs> he starts singing off key to her. This song called uh, Sukiyaki by this group called 4PM. Oh, and he goes, my God. It's all because of you. I'm feeling down and blue. No. <laughs> and you can see her slowly inch her ear away this Ew. way. It's recorded somewhere. I have to find it. That's one of the memories that have been burned <laughs> in my... Because it makes me die on the inside. Like, why the fuck would you do that? I never got to ask him. Wow. Like, why did you do that? That's say your friend to this day? Yeah. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers to him. Cheers to him. Cheers, man. That's like one of the most boldest moves I've ever seen in my life. That's uh, that's that's like probably the the most uncomfortable thing. I've we had <laughs> he sang the whole song from beginning, middle, and end. Bridge two. And we all had to watch it. And so that's when my friend whipped out the camera <laughs> so he could record that shit. That's so funny, dog. Ah, dude, I just I just think about that shit and I start to wonder. It's like, dude, I hope I never did something like that when I was younger. And now they're married with kids. Oh no, they're not. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm trying to think if I've ever. Oh, I'll tell you what I did one time. I love mimosas. Oh yeah, this you, little this little mango one. The mango in there, right? It fucking hits. It's nice. That's fire. Um. Okay, so I'll tell you something I did that was really oh god. Okay, so this girl <laughs> this girl I loved, I had like I super had a big old crush on in junior high. This girl Kimmy. Um she <laughs> she was sitting in a circle with her friends and I was trying to like impress her. And so my dumb ass is like, <laughs> I'm gonna jump over their circle. <laughs> and I, I had Hobbs, bro. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> What you mean you had hops? Uh, dog, I had hops for a little fucking short kid in junior high. I had hops. Like, my my, my vert was kind of great. Your, your boy had bunnies. I still kind of do have a decent vert, all right? Like, straight up, no running start, just like straight up vert is decent, okay? So, hey, we go test this theory out <laughs> t- today, dude. I want to see this shit. I don't have my jump. I have my Yeezys on today. Oh I can't God. jump in these. But, anyways. <laughs> Those are perfect for jumping. <laughs> no, 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 no. I don't want to crease them, David. So, anyways, <laughs> I, she's sitting in her circle of friends on the on the fucking playground talking to I'm them. I'm sorry. This is the most ridiculous. <laughs> this was that I have vert. Because you don't know. I got some buddies, dog. I'll hop over anything. <laughs> the most random statement. <laughs> Because people wouldn't know that about me. Because right. I don't be playing sports like that. But yeah. the vert is all right. All right. Um, that means I can just straight up like vertically jump. It might I can just <laughs> jump. Running start. <laughs> <laughs> so now, mind you, now this is with a running start. I'm gonna I'm like in my head. I'm gonna jump over this circle of of friends, and they're gonna be so impressed, right? So I run. <laughs> no. I ju- I jump, <laughs> and I did it wrong. I jumped too early, and my knee fucking 
kick the back of her head, dog. No. I need her in the back of the head. The girl, oh, the girl I had a crush on. So she's crying, dog, in pain because I fucking need her in the back of the head with a running start, bro. And um, do you Jorge Masvidal. Remember that fucking <laughs> UFC fight we saw at uh at Bart's house where the uh, guy got uh, when he jumped and yeah. kneed him in the face. That's exactly what you did to her. Yeah, pretty much. She didn't get knocked out <laughs> <She's> though. Just, <laughs> <laughs> you want to go on a date with me? Well, uh, needless to say. At that point, she liked me and a boy named Daniel, and um, yeah, she went with Daniel, and she ended up dating Daniel. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what, wait, what's the segue after that? After you need her in the back of head, she's crying. What are you doing? Then I'm like, oh my god, I'm so sorry. <laughs> you want to go out with me? <laughs> <laughs> oh, you mean if if I, I mean even if I had like successfully done it, I don't know, be I don't know what the move was from there. But <laughs> why was that the thing that you wanted to show her? I don't dog. I was 14. <laughs> 13, 14. I don't know. You know what? She gonna fall in love with this vert. <laughs> like, was she gonna turn around and be like, wow, yeah, Tim, maybe look at your vert. You gotta imagine like this, dog. Imagine you're sitting in a circle. All of a sudden, you see someone just flying over you, and you're like, oh, shit. And it's in slow motion, and your balls graze her eyes. Yeah. She's like, wow. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you this, I, I wouldn't fucking need a girl in her forehead, but it wasn't because I liked her. <laughs> it was on an accident. We were it was like the last the last couple of days of school and we're all talking. I forgot what I was doing, but I was telling a story about some shit and I threw up a knee and as I threw up the knee she laughed so hard she threw her head down because she was cracking up. Oh and then we coll- my knee collided to her fucking skull. Boom. Damn. I just remember she looked up and went Sort of bawling. Wow! Yeah, when you when you cry like that as a grown person, that's pain. Yes, it hurt her bad. I fucking need her to an oblivion. <sighs> when was like? <that? laughs> I can't believe you need a girl in the back of her head. That shit's crazy. <laughs> See, these are the stories that young people need to hear because they always <laughs> think that it's like, oh, you know, you have a very beautiful wife, you have a kid. They're like, oh, it was always easy for him. <laughs> this man need a woman in the back. Her fucking head. I need a girl, not a woman. Oh, 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 excuse me. <laughs> this will need a princess in the back of her head. It's so fun. I, I I don't think I've ever told that story because I forgot. That's hell of until fun. like right now. Wow, look at this podcast bringing out untold stories. You know, I've repeated so many of my stories. <laughs> Same here. But I totally forgot about that one. That's the worst thing I've ever heard in my life. Like, you telling me that story makes me want to die here on this spot. That's like one of those moments where you're, it's so fucking embarrassing, you just want the whole world to just turn dark. How about, how about you? Like, what's like, what would you say is like one of your most embarrassing moments? I never took chances like you, Tim. <laughs> I only went after girls that were clearly a one or a negative six. And so when I denied them, they are like, wow, this hot guy. <laughs> no, I, I just struck out a lot. And let me tell you something, man. The, f- the first few times when you strike out pretty hard, it, uh, I'll tell you, it hurts a little bit. Yeah. You know, especially when you're young, you take everything so fucking personal. Yeah. Um, I'll tell you one time, oh, this was such a subtle burn, but fuck, I remember it. Like, we were walking through the Lakewood Mall, it was me and my boys, and um, we thought we were fucking fly. Do you remember, do you remember Miskeen shirts? Yes. Okay. Yes. If you guys don't remember, Miskeen shirts were like splattered paint design, but each shirt was like, it was like a custom splattered shirt, right? Mm-hmm. So they were like expensive for t-shirts, like 60 bucks. So me and the homies, we um we were like, fuck that, we're going to do it ourselves, right? Mm-hmm. So stayed at my house one night with some acrylic paint, splattered some shirts and shorts. They look tight, actually. So we're feeling ourselves. Went to the mall. It was me and my boys, Julian, Kevin, Chris, maybe Rick. These were like my high school like homies, right? That I would go to the mall with and shit. So we're walking. Thought we were cool in our in our painted shirts, right? And so, so all this group of homies is is uh, black. One's Puerto Rican and black, and it was me. So they spotted this Asian girl, sexy one, at the mall, and they were like, they were like, "Yo!" Pointed to me, and I was pretending not to like see, just kind of like keep walking, not looking her direction. They were like, "Yo, what's up? What are like, yo, our homie?" And she looked at, she looked back and looked at me and was like, "Hmm." Did the did the ah uh, nah. Face and I'm like and I and I saw it in my perifs and all the homies went oh and I just and I just like ignored it and kept walking but I was hurt <laughs> and you just start tearing up <laughs> just my eyes started to well with water I was like 
this bitch. Well, guess what? You stupid, <laughs> stupid lady. You missed out on the biggest bag of your life. Yeah, girl, that's right. Hey, have you seen my vert? <laughs> I'm, talking about, I'm talking about up here, bro. I, your boy got bunnies. <laughs> You ain't even get on your knees to suck my dick. I'll hop up and just pop it right in, bitch. Imagine the family get-togethers, girl. <laughs> this is Tim. He got a vert. <laughs> that's, the, that's the movie. His vert is crazy. <laughs> that's the whole movie. It's called He Got a Vert. <laughs> Doesn't play basketball. All you do is just jump for no reason. <laughs> yeah, man, that bitch hurt me. Damn, that's, that's pretty harsh, man. I actually... And, you know, um, but I, I, I actually... I really... That whole game of trying to get numbers at the mall was something I really I had fun with. People don't understand either. Like, we used to go to the mall mm -hmm. just to see girls, mm -hmm. which that was the thing to do. There wasn't Bumble. There wasn't any of this other stuff. <laughs> right. You had to risk going to a mall, having a girl look at you and go, yuck. <laughs> <laughs> That was how we did it back then. Yeah. There was no social media, like, at all. I'm talking about no MySpace, no fucking nothing to, like, like someone's picture, comments on someone's shit. If you wanted to go meet a girl and you were in high school, you had to go to the mall with your crew of peoples, run across her crew of, of girls, and attempt to actually talk to somebody. Well, see, this is this is what I, I, I've been uh, noticing, too, just because... I've been seeing, <clears throat> I never really got to do dating apps, right? Mm -hmm. And I don't think I really needed to, yeah. right? Because we would just talk, whatever, we see what happens. But when I started looking into dating apps, right? Because I think they're really dope. Um, just to see how my other friends were doing it. And then a lot of these girls were, you know, they see some of these guys' profiles. And I read the profiles, I'm like, what makes you fucking think, like, this is going to work? Corny, bro. And we talked about this. Yeah, it's so bad. They're so fucking... And you know what? I think it's just these guys don't know how to communicate in real life anymore. So it's like, you know, and, and I... And so it, the attempt is like, how do I make a good first impression with my profile? But some of it is so... Like, I like the guys that do the, hey, I'm going to do like a weird joke. Mm -hmm. But the guys that are like... I'm a certified tractor driver. Yeah. Like, <laughs> you know, and I think those experiences that you had and I had earlier of getting like rejected, mm -hmm. it kind of allowed us to mold our game a little bit. Oh, 100%. You know, so they never had these moments where they got rejected really hard or where they had to, you know, face this weird thing where <laughs> you're going to embarrass yourself a little bit. Yeah. And then, you know, we made adjustments. We're like, oh, okay, that's mm -hmm. a little weird. That's a little weird. They never had any of that. And they go straight to online dating. And now that's your first impression as, you know, trying to show off. Mm -hmm. It's like, how's that going to work? You, you don't know what to say yet. And then, bro, like, let's say they have this amazing joke on their profile and maybe they can come up with some good DMs back and forth. They have to face the fact that they got to go and see the person in real life. And then I feel like I don't I mean, I don't know how 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 it works, because I've you know, like you and me, we we kind of were settled in before the whole dating app revolution. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But I uh, I'm so curious to see how that goes. Like a lot a part of me is like, oh, man, I wish I could have lived that a little bit just to experience it. It would have been fun, right? It yeah. would have been super fun. All right. Well, we're going to download some dating apps. Take a break. We'll be right back. David So and friends out there, spring has sprung and our friends at Manscaped.com have the best tools for some spring cleaning in your pants, okay? Trust me, your confidence will be blooming like the flowers this upcoming spring, just like your pubes are blooming in your little Korean shorts, David So. <laughs> Time to clear up that winter bush and join the other 4 million men who trust Manscaped. Use codes DUDES to get 20% off plus free shipping at Manscaped.com. Now let me tell you, they got everything for you. Inside this ball care bundle, You'll find their Lawn Mower 4.0 trimmer, Weed Whacker ear and nose hair trimmer, Crop Preserver ball deodorant, Crop Reviver toner, Performance Boxer briefs, and a travel bag to hold your goodies. Now, let me tell you, David Soul's pubes stink. That's why he <laughs> needs this ball deodorant, okay? They do not. <laughs> <laughs> 
If you purchase now, you will receive two free gifts, the Performance Boxer Briefs and the Shed Travel Bag. Smell and feel good this spring. One more time, get 20% off and free shipping with the code DUDES at Manscaped.com. That's 20% off and free shipping with the code DUDES at Manscaped.com. It's time to throw out your old hygiene habits and upgrade your life. Mm. Man, let me tell you, David, so you never know. You could literally die at any time or day. That's how I like to live my life, just thinking about death constantly, you know, (laughs) which is why I have life insurance. Why get covered now? Typically, life insurance gets more expensive as you age, so it's smart to get a policy sooner rather than later, okay? And if you're worried about price, by making it easy to compare your options from top companies, Policy Genius can help you make sure you're not paying a cent more than you have to for the coverage you need, okay? Let me tell you how it works, okay? Policy Genius is your one-stop shop to find the insurance you need at the right price, okay? Click the link in the description or head to policygenius.com dudes to get started. In minutes, you can compare personalized quotes from top companies to find your lowest price. You could save 50% or more on life insurance by comparing quotes with Policy Genius. The licensed agents at Policy Genius are on hand through the entire process to help you understand your options and make decisions with confidence. The Policy Genius team works for you, not the insurance companies, okay? And just for y'all, we got a special treat, all right? All you gotta do is head to policygenius.com slash dudes to get your free life insurance quotes and see how much you could save. Yeah, man, um, I really got into the process and the game of hollering for a time in my life. And I remember there was a time where it was like, I literally don't even need game. I learned it was 100% confidence. Like, Mm. you don't even need to be charming sometimes. Because there was one time, man, (laughs) well, yeah, okay, of course, you know, my appearance was put together, right? I was well dressed. I smelled good. I was groomed. You know what I'm saying? And but there was one time I was at the mall with Rick, and this was high school shit, right? I, but like I literally would just like saw a girl at Hot Topic, was like, and I just walked up to her with my phone. I was like, gave her my phone. She was like, oh okay, put in her number, <laughs> and then and then I was like, thank you. <laughs> then, wow. Yeah, and that's when I learned. I was like, yo, confidence is such a big factor. You know, where it's kind of like, yo. Here. She was like, oh, okay, yeah, sure. Wow. Yeah. That's pretty amazing. I, I, if I witnessed that in person, I would have just been on my knees going like this. You are a god! <laughs> How the fuck did that work? But we never, like, you know, we never, like, dated. I think also there was a, there was a time where I was getting numbers for fun. I don't know if that me and that girl ever communicated. Um, but uh, it could have been a fake number. Who knows? But still. But, you know, yeah, but like I try to tell people, I try to tell these youngins, man, it's like confidence is such a big part. If you go into it second guessing yourself or kind of being like, oh, no, like, hey, I don't know if you, you know, blah, blah, blah. Then the girl's going to be like, oh, yeah, well, I guess I don't know if I want to either. You know, one of the things, too, that guys just don't ever ask, it's like you always ask like guy to guy, like, oh, what did these girls like? It's like you could always ask a girl, too. Yeah. You know, if you have a homegirl, be like, hey, what are some things that you notice about a guy that you really enjoy? <laughs> And if they're honest enough, like I've asked this multiple times throughout my youth, right? Mm-hmm. And there's a few things that I've heard, and it might change now, that girls notice. Mm-hmm. It's it usually it, when it comes to physical appearance, haircut shoes. Yeah. <laughs> you know? And I've seen these guys kind of like sometimes sample these these bits of advice where they go, oh, all I need is confidence. It's like, no, all, you also have to brush your fucking teeth, yeah. get a haircut, wear some like decent kicks. <laughs> right. Like, what are you talking about, man? Like, that's not the only part of the equation. It helps. Smelling good is a is a plus. Um, and that's not to say drown yourself in cologne, but use some fucking soap and put some deodorant on, mm-hmm. you know? Um, it's interesting with the shoe shit, because I always used to be somebody who was like, my shoes were always fucking pristine. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? Clean as hell. Laces washed. Everything. Um but now then, as you get older, I also feel like it depends on um, the vibe of who you're attracting. You know what I'm saying? Because now it's like dirty shoes are an aesthetic, mm-hmm. you know? Dirty chucks kind of like gives off a certain, oh, this person might be into different types of, maybe this person is into alternative rock music because they have dirty chucks on. Yes, that's, <laughs> let me tell you something. <laughs> you, you gotta, that's the first way you judge somebody. <laughs> look, look at those goddamn things. <laughs> Have you ever dated somebody, or what, what was a, who's a person that you dated that kind of changed changed you completely? Because I only had one person like that, 
And then it, it changed my perspective of like who I am, how I approach things, and I never dated people the same way after. Interesting. Um, well, I'll tell you this. I feel like I've, I've learned different things from every girl that I've like, you know, dated, right? Um, I'll tell you this one significant, super surface level thing. My ex, um, and mind you, I was probably like 20 at the time. Uh, you know, kind of fresh out of high school. I was still wearing big ass clothes in college. But she traditionally for her in her life liked skater boys. Mm. And so I was her first hip hopper that she had dated, right? Ew. So she really wanted me to try some fucking skinny jeans. And I used to say, I'll never rock no skinny jeans, right? But in college, I started wearing like smaller shirts. And I was like, oh, a small shirt makes me look kind of buff, right? But I was still wearing like bigger ish jeans. So one day we we're at the mall and uh, she grabbed some Obey jeans, some tan ones. I remember specifically they were skinny jeans. She was like, Can you just try these on? I was like, All right. I put them on. They didn't feel as constricting as I thought. And I was like, All right, well, how do these look? She was like, That's hot. And I was like, And ever since then, I never went back to wearing. Big ass jeans. Big ass baggy ass jeans. Yeah, like I mean, yeah, I mean now baggy pants are kind of coming back. Um, so you know, I got some like bigger sweats or whatever here and there, but um, I'm not really comfortable wearing big pants anymore. And it was like from that day where she was like, "That's hot," and I was like, "Oh, okay, I look, I look good in these skinny jeans. I'm gonna rock these skinny jeans." And um, that's something that changed me. Forever, <laughs> damn. The fu- I have a couple of ones. There was one <laughs> when I was. So I typically dated, you know, girls who were pretty much similar. Would you like another mimosa? I would. Okay. They were pretty similar in the sense of like, kind of like the personage were kind of some. They're a little goofy and, and all this other stuff, which I like really goofy girls. Yeah. So one time I was like, you know what? I, I just, I couldn't get over it. Like, it was like my very first girlfriend, right? Mm. And so I was like, I'm going to go for the exact opposite. And this girl was the exact opposite. So I met her at my friend's um, sister's Halloween party. And she was three or four years older. And so we're there. Oh, the naughty cop. The the nun. The right? nun, yes. And she was, she was the one that made me change something about myself that I didn't realize. <laughs> was that my dick game was poor as fuck. <laughs> <laughs> like... Like, I had no fucking idea, right? Because most, because people just, you know, the girls that I was hooking up with, they wouldn't say anything, you know what I mean? And it would just be okay or whatever, right? But I remember after we hooked up, I asked her, I was like, how was it? Just, I asked. I don't know why I asked her. Yeah. But then she goes, that's okay. You told us this story. Oh, did I? Yeah. All right, cut this part out. We'll go to the other story. <laughs> no, we can keep going because right. because I will continue off yeah. of this. Where let me tell you, cheers, cheers to whack dick game. Mm-hmm. <laughs> hey, Robin Couch, would you like a mimosa? I don't have a cup though. All good. Okay, a, well, we'll find one for you. I'll cup. live vicariously through you guys and your mimosa. Drink. Okay. So, <clears throat> man, I tell people, and I've said this on my other podcast. Ah man, look, it's so when you're growing in your own sexuality and your experiences, right? As a man, there's always pressure to perform, right? Because we are supposed to have our stroke on point, last long enough. Um, it's like sex is almost on us to do the job, right? I say women to me are kind of sometimes. <laughs> It's like that beautiful old Honda Accord that you had. There's like a certain way to make it go and run smooth, and you just got to figure the fuck out what you, it is. You got to figure it out. And the thing about it is everybody's different. So it's it's difficult for us when we're new to the game to figure this shit out. And and I, I've, t- I've said this before. Let me tell you, there are girls in my past who probably to this day will be like, Man, Timothy De La Ghetto gave me the wackest dick of my life. <laughs> <laughs> hey, let me tell you something. I bet you my number beats yours. 
You want to bet? I'll call them up right now. Hey, how bad was that dick? They're like, oh my God, the worst. Yes, bro, because look, we're figuring shit out, you know? And and look, there's and there's on and there's also girls out there who who will say, yo, Timothy De La Ghetto gave me some fire dick. Like, laid it down, made me <laughs> skeet. It was great. But there were also girls out there who were like, ah man, like, mmm, I was very disappointed in my experience with him. And um and it sucks because you know, sometimes it can be hit or miss, right? Especially when I was in this stage of my life where I was just hoeing out and just hooking up. Like, I feel like sex becomes the best when it's um, natural and you get to know each other's bodies and you understand what this person likes. So when you are consistent with somebody is when the shit gets really good, right? Mm -hmm. um, so when you're figuring somebody out and you're new to this shit, ah, oh, man. Look, I, I, and here's what's crazy, right? It's like I've literally hooked up with... with with some with, with girls who have been like, I don't give head. And then when I was younger, I needed head to get going, right? Mm. My 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 shit was like, yes, give me some head and then we'll be good to go. We'll get this shit going. Like I need a little foreplay, right? Um, and I'm down to eat the cooch all day. I love it, right? But when a girl would be like, oh, no, I don't really give head. It's like, you throwing me all off my game right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because now yeah. I'm like, okay, what the fuck am I gonna do, right? To, to me, like that that concept is very interesting because it's like there's so much things you could do with sex, right? Yeah. And you just eliminated thirty percent of it right there. <laughs> <laughs> right. You know, and it's not to say that if if I receive, I don't give back. Yeah. You know, it's just that that was the weird thing. It's like this is a huge. I think that's a, that would be a deal breaker for me. Oh, dog. Yeah, I agree. Right, and I, I you know. You know, talking to like family therapists and whatever and relationship therapists, I found out because I went through couple counseling and stuff too, mm -hmm. you know, through through therapists, and they kind of told us that one of the there's two big main reasons for um, a divorce. It's uh, sexual miscommunication or mm. like sexual incompatibility and money, mm. which is kind of nuts, right? Like people think like, oh, well, if they don't really do this in bed or whatever, whatnot, and this is mind you with great communication to figure out what you guys like. Mm -hmm. But a lot of the times people don't address what their sexual needs are mm. and that becomes a huge reason for the divorce and they get married and they go, I'm not satisfied in this one, this very important aspect of my life, mm -hmm. which is sex. That's why I sometimes I don't understand how people get married without testing out the car. First. I know. Like that's that sexual compatibility is very, very important. And mind you, I, I do know some people who. Maybe the husband was a virgin when they got married or that wait. Like, I know people who have waited until marriage and the shit still worked out fine, right? Yeah, of course. Yeah. But like, but also it's like, bro, like, I mean, I mean, call me a heathen, but <laughs> it's so important. You know, it really is important, especially in those. Like I say, the first the first like, five years of your relationship where you're really um, you're in this uh honeymoon stage mm -hmm. and it's like all you're doing is eating and fucking yeah so it's like we missed that out we missed out on that part yeah like why you gotta make sure the fucking is good yeah like and fun and like mm -hmm. you know you gotta be able to communicate that so man it's crazy to think that people get married and yo they've never had sex before that's crazy but dude i know a lot of like these young like christian kids who will literally get married just so they could have sex yes and that's the that's the fucked up part yeah too. it's the fucking worst thing and by the way too a lot of these relationships i've seen fail more than more than it succeed yeah bro because they're getting married just so they can smash Which they the dumbest thing it's so stupid so they get up in this like mind state of like yes like we're like we they basically just have a crush on each other and they really want to smash exactly. so they're like let's get married <laughs> oh it's like it's the fucking worst man and also too man it's like one of the things that i really fucked up when i was younger is this idea of thinking that just because because i was a lover boy right so i've when i was in love i was in love and that was the only person for me right yeah, and then yeah, yeah. you know when these breakups would happen it's kind of like you feel your whole world is crashing down mm. but then you start to figure out one of the things that helped me out was um looking at relationships in the long term where there are people who have been married for their whole life mm -hmm. and the person that would they were with that they loved 100 percent get taken away from a tragedy mm. and they get remarried and they fall in love again yeah so it's like why am I thinking that this one person who chose to leave me is going to be it for me? Yeah, you know what? I used to, um, and I remember this conversation specifically, like Chia in the in the early 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 stages of our relationship was like, "Do you believe that people can have more than one soulmate?" Right? And I was kind of like, 
nah, you're my soulmate. Like, there's only one. And then she, and at first she said that she could, be, she believes there's more than one soulmate. And, and I was a little like hurt. offended. Yeah. <laughs> a little hurt in the beginning. Like, oh, what are you, you saying there's, you got more than one soulmate out there? Like, aside from me? But exactly what you said, right? When you think about it, um, you know, life can go so many different ways. And plus, like, there's so many people in the world. Um, I for sure feel like it's possible to have different people in your life that even are your soulmates but aren't necessarily meant to be your, like, lover. You feel me? Mm. Like, Rick. I would look at Rick as my soulmate, as a soulmate. Mm. Because mm. the way me and him connect on certain shit is a way that I could never connect with other people. You oh, know? 100%. So this... <laughs> You guys don't even know. <laughs> these, these motherfuckers, dude. <laughs> Sometimes I'm like, what is this? I'm like, what is what is this thing you're sending me? And he goes, well, Rick. And I'm like, oh, well, okay. <laughs> Two peas in a fucking pod. Don't send me this shit. <laughs> like, they, they, these guys, if you understand their connection, it's an unspoken connection. And I, I'm always like, who else is partaking in this thing that you're sending me? And it's like, well, me and Rick. I'm like, yeah, okay. <laughs> But yes, it's that other person in the universe that doesn't make you feel weird for liking certain things. And we and it's like if I'm if I was to look at soulmates on in this way, it's like, yeah, Rick is a soulmate. She is my soulmate. And like there's there's for sure other people that maybe I've ran into in my past or will run into in my future where I'm like, I connect with you in a way that I don't connect with anybody else on. You know what I'm saying? So for sure I think with all the infinite possibilities and infinite souls in the universe, for sure, there's 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 different soulmate. Have you ever met um, a girl that mm-hmm. where you're just kind of like, hmm, maybe in another lifetime? Um, yeah, yeah, I think so. That's one of those weird things. It's like, oh, maybe in another lifetime we probably would have been together. Because you know what? It's like, man. Like I said, you know, there's so many infinite possibilities and lifetimes, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And especially with Doctor Strange and the multiverse, and um, it's like, who knows which, like, alternate universe where you might, you know, you feel a connection with somebody and it's like, oh, okay, well, yeah, this can't happen now. But maybe maybe we were, like, king, a king and queen of a, a distant planet in another universe, you know what I'm that's, saying? That's that weird thing, because I remember when I... Um first started dating um mariel after this break we'll talk about it (laughs) (laughs) hello my friends moms are often one of the few people in our lives who still leave voicemails on our phones or call us just to say hi kind of losers so this mother's day (laughs) make make that next mom call extra special spoil your mom with the gift of quality premium wireless audio courtesy of raycon listen whether i'm jogging walking doing bullshit in the house i make sure i use raycon my friends i don't switch up my earbuds like raycon's like i don't know ray j switches up his beanie on those shows (laughs) all right i keep my raycons in my ears at all times I love it. Sound quality that doesn't break your bank. So my friends, you need to get in it because music is happening. Podcast is happening. In fact, Tim, don't you listen to this podcast with your Raycon earbuds? I sure do. Yup. I plug them in. They're comfortable. The bass is popping. They stay in my ears. Not some stupid dangly downy things. Mm -hmm. Just nice and comfy and stylish in my ears. Mm -hmm. If you're listening to music with your earbuds with wires, are you listening to an A-track as well? Mm -hmm. You stupid old idiot. Tell mom how much you love her and make sure she hears it in crystal clear audio audio quality with Raycon. Go to buyraycon.com slash dudes to get 15% off your Mother's Day order. That's buyraycon.com slash dudes. Yeah. So when I when I first started dating Mary, this is we, we weren't really together, but then I, I was really, really attracted to her because Mary was making me laugh. Like she was mm. cracking me the fuck up. Mm. But I remember I, I went out to a show and then um, I met this this other girl, this is other Korean girl, and it's just by happenstance, right? And I always feel like this kind of happened every time I was trying to commit to somebody else. I don't know whether it's like God, the universe, or something else. It's like <laughs> kind of reminding me, like, are you sure that this is the one that you're going to go for? Mm. So I, you know, met this girl at a bar, 
it was after a college show and I was like, um, I'm going to just go out and drink by myself because these guys can't drink. And then I went out and I just started talking to women mm-hmm. and I met this one girl. And I kind of, I remember we had such a good time. It like, we sparked shit off. And I was like, huh, maybe in another lifetime. Yeah. Right. And I felt like, oh, I, I feel that that girl, we something great could have happened if mm. I hadn't met Mariel at the time. You know what? I feel like, uh, you know, if you believe that, like, there's like a a balance in the universe and like everything happens for a reason, right? Which I do. I do believe everything happens for a reason. Um, I for sure feel like, you know, Chia was like meant to be my wife, right? Um, but I also do believe in like, you know, a part of me does believe in like alternate universes and other lifetimes and shit. So it's like, who knows? Like I said, there's so many people, right? And so many like different ways to connect and different circumstances that, you know, if you would have just met this person a year later or a year earlier, who knows which way it could have gone, you know? Or it could have just gone really bad. It could have just gone really bad. And then maybe I would have just ended up with Chio regardless. Yeah. Who knows? Oh, that would have, that's trippy, dude. It's like no matter what in any infinite amount of possibilities, it still leads to the same person. Yeah, there's this episode of Bob's Burgers like that where, um, you know, all the kids are kind of like talking about how, oh, you know, what if what if this happened and mom and dad weren't supposed to end up together? But then like the way it, but when they kind of go through it, they they Bob and Linda always end up together. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Through all the different circumstances. It's like, no, wait, but then this. Oh, but then then this. You know? I mean, there's definitely been times, too, where like I think those thoughts were kind of nice to have at first. But then I do also get a flashback and remember of people who I dated who I thought like, oh, this girl is fucking really cool. Yeah. And then you just get to know them. It's like we're completely inc- incompatible. <laughs> like this is not going to fucking work. Like there was a girl that um, who she's very fucking cute. Right. Very fucking pretty. But I've known her as a friend for so long. It didn't cross my mind that she would be somebody that I would want to date. Mm. And then one day we were k- kicking it. She just goes, how come you never asked me out? Mm. And I'm like, well, I just, I don't know. Like, we're friends. I never really thought. She was like, well, why don't we try? Mm. I'm like, okay, cool. So we tried it out. (laughs) And then within the first, like, two weeks, I was like, I fucking hate you. (laughs) You are not the one. Yeah. It's because, and for me and her, is that she had a lot of, like, emotional shit. She didn't really work out yet. Mm. And I wasn't willing to stick around and deal with that for her. Mm. So, for example, she had a habit of snapping back immediately over absolutely nothing. Mm. And this is, like, during our honeymoon stage. Oh, God. And it's like, this shouldn't happen yet. Yeah. Like, there's nothing that I have said or done that allows you to elicit this type of response <laughs> right so for example we were arguing it wasn't even an argument it was i disagreed about something right and she was like what do you think i'm fucking dumb oh and, and then this is so she was visiting from she wasn't from um cali so she was visiting and she was staying with me mm. and i just looked at her and this was like two weeks in and i looked at her i was like it's not gonna work out <laughs> <laughs> Her response to this day makes me laugh because she goes, why? <laughs> That's after she just cursed me out. Right. You know, she goes, fucking this, you know, just going off. And I go, it's not going to work out. Like, hey, there's no way I'm going to keep on doing this yeah. forever. <laughs> she just goes, why? Like, hey, what you just did, I hate that. Yeah. Never again. Her fucking, she went from like pissed and cursing to me to why? <laughs> Immediately. Like I'm like, anime eyes. Yeah, I was like, because... You don't know how to control your emotions. Yeah. I was like, in our honeymoon stage, you just cursed me out. And by the way, no matter how angry I've been with anybody in my life, I've never cursed them out. Mm. And you did that to me in the first two weeks. There's a lot of shit you got to deal with. But what if she like immediately got down and started doming you up? And then I would be like, listen, you got to, uh, uh, <laughs> what did I say? <laughs> I love you. <laughs> Marry me. You are the one. <laughs> She was great though. Why did you roll your R's on that? One? <laughs> you are because it's so good. You are. <laughs> you guys ever get head so good you start rolling your R's? <laughs> Ridiculous. <laughs> que romantico. <laughs> oh, we're Spanish now, huh? Yeah. Impossible. <laughs> Nacho Libre! <laughs> Incarnacion! <laughs> I love it. Have you been to Mexico? 
I've been to Mexico, but not in a fun way. I did. <laughs> I went there for missionary trips. Oh, so, lame! <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Cristo, you're ruining my trip. Are you? <laughs> I went out to go build homes and give money to poor people. He said, lame. Whack! <laughs> you gotta get some tacos, bro. <laughs> go to fucking Ensenada, dog. Get some fish tacos. I'm over here building this house for somebody. Look at that fucking loser. Ooh, they need homes? Oh, please. You're like, you're like literally giving the clothes off your back. I'm like, Pussy! <laughs> Come to the strip club! <laughs> David's over here helping people and shit like a fucking dweeb. Oh, man. You gotta go to Mexico, dog. Yeah, I never went there for fun, but I definitely went there for missionary trips. And, dog, there's, a, there's something that I went to on a missionary trip that fucking wrecked me super hard mm. because... There was this little kid, and it stuck with me for the rest of my life, and it caught, and it kind of like taught me to be really grateful. Mm -hmm. And um, I think you know when I have kids and they get older, I'm gonna send them on missionary trips because it's a really good kind of like snap to reality. Mm. It's like you know your life isn't that fucking. Yes, bad. yes, help and you appreciate some shit. Yeah, and that's that that was the onset of me learning how to appreciate things, and I got better and better as as, as I got older because we were walking around, and when you're in Tijuana, like. Yeah, Mexico has a resort and it's really nice, but the shitty parts are really fucking bad. Mm -hmm. And we were walking around and there were a bunch of stray dogs. Mm. And these stray dogs were kind of growling at you sometimes. And I'm like freaking the fuck out. I'm getting scared. And this kid starts laughing. And then I asked the translator, oh, why is he laughing at me? He thinks I'm funny. He goes, no, he's laughing. And he, you know, he starts talking Spanish. He goes, he's saying that he finds it funny that you're so scared when God is walking with you as well. And then he was like holding my hand. And dude, I started bawling. Because wow. it was like this kid that has so much faith. And I'm like, uh, I, I, my perspective's a little fucked, mm. right? Like if this little kid can smile and be happy and this type of shit. And all this, yeah. Then I can do it too. Wow. And that's what I learned. And then at the end of the time, my <laughs> other friends are getting pussy and then fucking getting drunk. <laughs> and then another, another kid on the side is like, gay. <laughs> <laughs> Who's that fucking hotel over there, dude? Mariposa. <laughs> this one got fucking doomed by that kid, dude. Fucking maricon. <laughs> no, no, but that's beautiful. That's beautiful. I just don't love you, fool. <laughs> um, yeah, man. Um. <laughs> hey, but for real though, people in Mexico be kind of lightweight, hella racist towards Asian people. <laughs> Oh, no, towards <laughs> towards towards a lot of people, um, especially at the at the and, and TJ is crazy dog. Yeah. Um, okay, so one time, um, so we used to go to TJ all the time. Like as soon you know, as soon as you're 18, 19, you know, it's like you can't drink in the United States. So cross the border to TJ, drink, get some tacos, you know, kick it with your homies, right? Right after high school. And uh, and of course I would go with my boy uh, PD Flo Pedro he's Mexican. Did I tell you the story about? Or have I told the story on this podcast about uh, when he saved us from the police? No. Oh, okay. So we're going to TJ. We're in TJ walking around. My boy Sam has a fucking beer. We're walking on the street. This cop comes up to us and he's like, "Yo, you're not allowed to have that open bottle of alcohol on the street." Give me $200 right now. Oh, my God. They're sweating you for money, dude. Yes. He's like, give me $200 right now or we're taking you to jail. So Sam's like, oh, shit. I didn't know. And then Pedro, PD Flo, who is like, Spanish is literally his first language. Um, oh, he's Mexican as fuck. <laughs> yes. But he looks white as hell. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like kind of um, light brown hair, blue eyes. Curly. Yeah. So he was like, hey, man, in food Spanish to this cop, like, yo. I'm Mexican. I'm from here. I know what you're doing. Like, dude, relax. And the cop was like, oh, all right, go ahead. <laughs> oh, my God. The cop was like, okay, you're good. Never mind. <laughs> Dog, it's crazy. But it's it's really like that. That's why wherever we went, we had to be with, like, a local person because mm -hmm. they were helping us out because they would leave. Because, I mean, I mean, we're there to fucking help out this small little town. Yeah. You know? <laughs> they sweat especially us in Tijuana, dog. Like, when you get deeper, like, because, you know, I've been to uh, Ensenada, which is super pretty, bomb-ass tacos. That's, that's basically L.A. It's not as LA, <laughs> <laughs> but it's it's deeper in there, you know. They they literally have LA people, like LA Mexican people, that were deported back, and they speak fluent English there. Interesting. It's, it's trippy. Like when I was there, they're like, "Hey, bro, you trying to buy some hats?" I'm like, "The fuck?" Oh, he's like, "I'm from Ensenada." Wait. I, I was like, "Where, where are you from?" He goes, "I'm from Los Angeles. I got deported. I got wow. I got sent back to Mexico, so I'm here." And there's I, a lot of people like that. 
Um, if you ever want to go to like a sweet vacation spot that isn't as um, commercial as like, I don't know, Cabo, um, there's a city called uh, Huatulco, which has a beautiful like all inclusive resort. Um, but it's not as like, you know, commercialized, you know what I'm saying? So you go to Huatulco, um, me and fuck, me and Chia went and we rode like, um, ATVs, ATVs on the beach. Um, there's like a super bomb pizza place in the city. Uh, it's like, it's like, it's known there. It's like this really good pizza place. Um, the resort was dope. Everybody's super nice. Everyone says, it's a pleasure instead of you're welcome. Oh. You'll be like, oh, thank you for this. They go, it's a pleasure. It's a pleasure. And it's it's so nice. Um, but also, I remember one time, speaking of the accidental racism, <laughs> we were walking around. It was my group of high school people, and, and one of the homies was a guy named Steven. He's a black dude. So we're walking in a group, a bunch of Mexicans, me, and Steven. And this car rolls up next to us. And... Uh, and so he didn't, the guy didn't say the N word, but it was like, um, okay, so you know how, okay, you know Ryan uh, Nigahiga? Mm -hmm. It was the first half of Nigahiga's last name. Okay. <laughs> and he rolled up, he's like, hey, Ryan Nigahiga, <laughs> you want sex? <laughs> and Steven is like, what? <laughs> And the guy's like, you want sex? And we're like, no, we're good. And he's like, okay. He drove oh, off. Okay, hold on. But he was, you know, he was trying to like, you know, solicit some prostitution. We're like, oh, we're cool, bro. And it was another dude, spoke perfect English, was shaming me for not wanting to go to the strip club. He was like, yo, we got a strip club right here. Perfect English. He was like, go to the strip club right here, blah, blah, blah. It's super cheap. Um, Drinks are a dollar, whatever, whatever. I was like, I'm cool, bro. He's like, you don't want to go to the strip? You don't want to see naked girls? I was like, I'm cool. I'm with my friends. He's like, you got a little sugar in your tank. I'm like, bro, chill out. I just, I'm with my friends. <laughs> Why is this full insulting you? How is I going to get you in there? I was, I was like, yo, can you relax? Got a little sugar in your tank? What is this full from like the 1960s and shit? <laughs> Some 1960s bigotry and shit? <laughs> you got a little sweet in your tea, boy. <laughs> Yo, walk around here looking sweet like a lollipop. <laughs> like, my God. Good old TJ. Dude, man, I travel, people. <laughs> if you want some funny fucking stories, just travel and see what happens. Mm -hmm. Of course, like, I've, I've definitely, you know, the biggest reason why I haven't gone to Mexico recently is just there's just been a lot of shit going on there. Mm -hmm. It's a little scary. especially. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah I wouldn't recommend Mexico, uh, especially TJ, right now. Yeah, yeah, it's been kind of, like, precarious. And a lot of people are like, oh, it's still super safe. Um, there's definitely uh, safe parts, but my last thing was when I found out that somebody that I know um, got kidnapped at a resort. What? And, you know, that usually typically doesn't happen because, you know, from what I've heard and, you know, a lot of, like, friends who've lived in Mexico, they say a lot of that stuff is, like, cartel ran because they, they protect it because if it's them, they get them, they get money from it yeah, and, yeah. The, you know, tourists come in. But this guy got kidnapped from, like, competing cartel. Her two stories like this, one from John, actually, and then somebody else that I know got oh, kidnapped, shit. got the shit beaten out of him, took all of his shit and was, like, held for ransom. But, you know, the guy doesn't have money. You know, yeah, and so they just let him go, but they fucked him up. What city in Mexico do you remember? Do you know? Uh, I don't remember which resort this was, but it, Damn. yeah, but there was like a competing cartel wow. that kidnapped him. It was like, I and by the way, this is like last year, so Whoa. a little, little fucking scary. You know, you know what I'm saying? You know, big white guy. They kind of whatever found him saw him they took him wow. which i don't even know the the sequences of events of like how that fucking happened because he wouldn't tell me too much because i think he was like super traumatized and yeah. shit like the guy ha didn't go back to work for like a month because he was just like traumatized wouldn't leave his house that's crazy yeah so i don't know that that kind of freaks me out a little bit and i'm pretty sure like the the likelihood of that happening is very fucking low but the fact that it did freaks me the fuck out and especially because it's somebody i know yeah well, thanks for watching this episode. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> On a positive note. Next episode, we're going to get into all our crazy travel stories, guys. Thank you for watching and listening to another episode of Dudes Behind the Foods. Hey, make sure you watch the episode of uh, When Foodie Calls Lunar New Year Festival from Disneyland. I just dropped that um, a couple days ago, so make sure you watch that. And um, make sure you rate this five stars on wherever you're listening to your podcast, iTunes, Spotify, whatever the fuck. I'm Tim Chantharongsu. And I'm Davis So. Bye. Yo, it's the dudes. 
behind the food. Do, 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 do.